Hi, I'm Rick Dior. Today we're going to talk about orchestra bells. The German word for orchestra bell is Glockenspiel, and that's how they're most commonly known in the orchestra world. Now many of you, if you played in band in school, or uh, wind ensemble, or in college, you've played this instrument. It's extremely common. In fact, it's the most common mallet orchestra instruments. Other mallet orchestra instruments are the vibraphone, the marimba, of course, the xylophone, the crotales, and the chimes. But these are the most common, and there's lots of different types of orchestra bells. So I'm going to show you some of mine in this next video, and probably I'll do another one uh, right after where I play them all and you can hear the difference. But today we'll just display them and also I'm cleaning this particular instrument because I just acquired it and I'll show you how I do that. It's very very simple. So uh, these particular bells are Deegan round tops and these are probably the most famous of all the orchestral bells. They're the best sounding uh, and that's not just my opinion that's most people's opinion and this particular bar is a one and a quarter inch bar. They also made them in a seven eighths width, and I have a set of those too that I'll show you uh, in a little while. But this is the most desirable size for this instrument. Uh, the range of the instrument uh, basically is from G to C, two and a half octaves. They did make extended range instruments. They also made a high D instrument, which uh, you know goes one above the top C. And they also made larger instruments on order. But the most common was this, uh, this um, particular instrument that was two and a half octaves. So it would start at a low G, which is this bar here. And this is the bar that says Deegan Round Top on it. Hopefully you'll be able to see that. If not, I'll take a picture of it. And there were two tunings offered for these bars. There was a high tuning and a low tuning. The high tuning was uh, above 440. I think it was about 450. I'll post it on a screen. I'll do a little research and see if I could find out. But they were tuned a little bit sharp. And these were tuned A440, so normally uh, the second A on the instrument, which is right here, and this is the bar, will say A440 on it. And that'll also say uh, uh, J.C. Deegan on it, and the patent date, which for these was June 30th, 1901. Now that doesn't mean these are 120 years old, that just means that's the patent of the bells. These are probably at least 100 years old, I would say. Uh, and they may have been replated at some point, but the plating on these, they were triple plated. They were incredible uh, craftsmen as far as the plating goes. The cases, not so much. We'll talk about that in a minute. Now, the uh, higher A, the highest one has an L on it, and you see that. I believe that stands for the low tuning. Okay, uh, I've not seen a high tuning instrument, but I believe that's what it stands for. If someone knows otherwise, let me know. But it makes perfect sense because the low tuning of the instrument was A440. Now the orchestra tuning now has moved up to A442, but these still sound in tune. Uh, it's two cents, you can't really hear too much. Sometimes um, if you're playing a vibe and a marimba, that one's tuned to A440 and one's tuned to A442, you can get a little bit of funniness going on. Obviously, two marimbas, one tuned to A442, one tuned to A440, A440 will sound weird, okay? So uh, I've had all the instruments at the university tuned uh, up to the new standard. So we'll talk about these, and, and I've, I've just received these from a very close friend of mine who retired several years back, and... Um, I, I purchased these from him, and he had these for many years, and before that, someone else I know had them, and and someone else I don't know, but I know of, had them before that. So just like a great violin, a Stradivarius, these things change hands many times, and they're meant to be played. So I'm not really a collector of anything, although it may seem that way because I have so many instruments, but I do play everything. And this instrument is so glorious that it needs to be played. The sound is just unbelievable as compared to anything else, as you'll see in the follow-up video when I, I compare them against some modern glockenspiels. So when I clean these, I use the same thing that I use to clean drum hardware, which is a automotive product. It's called Mother's 
a mag and aluminum polish. You can use lots of different things. Uh, but this works really well, doesn't really leave a residue, and it will offer some protection. Now, somebody, uh, and not my friend, but somebody years ago used some sort of steel wool on these. So I don't know if you can see that. Probably not, but they're slightly scratched. That's something you never, ever, ever want to do. Even the finest steel wool, uh, you don't want to use that on these because they, they will scratch very easily. So if you're always cleaning them, then the, uh, they won't oxidize, they won't do anything like that. But over time, if you don't clean them and they're exposed to a lot of humidity, they're in an attic or they're in a garage, they're in the case, you know, uh, they, are, they will rust and pit. And I've seen that. These are not pitted at all, but some dummy used some um, steel wool, which makes me a little bit upset, but it's okay. Uh, you don't really notice it when you're playing them, but you notice it when you're cleaning them. So when I clean these, I use, uh, uh, just like my drum hardware, I use a microfiber cloth. And I'll just put a little bit, bit of this polish on there. And just a little. And I'll take a bar. And I'll, you know, use some elbow grease. Rub it hard. You can't do any damage with a microfiber cloth. Now make sure that you're using one of these products that doesn't have any kind of... Um, you know, product in there that's going to scratch the bar. So it can't be abrasive like Ajax, okay? So nothing like that. So th this product does not have anything like that that will scratch anything. That's why it works so well. And it, like I said, it's great on drum hardware. If you've seen my um, other videos where I clean stuff, I always use this and it keeps everything uh, from oxidizing and coats it. And keeps it nice and fresh. It does not affect the sound uh, in any way. Okay, if anything, it'll help it because once you start getting that pitting and the dirt on there, it, the bar tends to dry up a little. Although these things ring forever. So you see the difference. It's super shiny now. Okay. Now these are very, very shiny bells, which makes them difficult sometimes to play because if there's a spotlight on there, they'll, you know, they'll shine in your eyes. So that's one thing. They're great in orchestra pits. Most opera houses will use these. There's also a version of these called Parsifal Bells. It's the same bell, but it's on a stand and they have resonators. And they're just so heavy. These things probably weigh about, uh, I'd say about 50 pounds, maybe, maybe 60. I haven't weighed them, but they're heavy. Uh, but the Parsifal Bells are on a stand and with the resonators, which were nickel, they could be extremely heavy. And they're usually bigger, a, a bigger range of an instrument. Okay, so... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and clean the rest of these uh, quickly, and then I'm going to clean the case. The, the case, this case was remade. I did not make it. This looks to me like a Musser case. Now, my friend Artie Lieberman, who passed away a few few years back, he was an expert on Deegan instruments. I wish I could have uh, done this video with him. In fact, I would have done lot, lots of videos with him because he was an incredible, incredibly knowledgeable guy when it came to any kind of metal instrument. But unfortunately, he passed away. So he taught me a lot about them and how to clean them, how to maintain them, and a lot about the different mo models. He even told me there was, a, and he had a set, showed me there was a reverse round top that actually, uh, if you look at that bar, you see why they're called round tops. Because they have basically a round top. Uh, he showed me a reverse round top where it was round on the bottom and flat on the top, which was strange. They still sounded the same. I think it was an experiment, but he had all kinds of things. He had, uh, you know, they made organ parts. They had chimes. I have uh, some Deacon chimes. I also have a, a great artist special xylophone that I got from him. We'll show you that in another video. So, uh, so anyway, we'll turn the camera off. I'll clean this and then we'll be back. So I've got all the bars off of here and I've cleaned them all. And the case was also very, very dirty. And this, is ca this case is like a Musser case. And actually, looked on the bottom and it was rebuilt by my friend Artie. He had a business called Mallet Instrument Service. So he did do this for my friend, who I played in the orchestra with. Uh, so uh, that answers that. And it was probably in an old wooden case and over time those cases would just literally just fall apart just destruct and I'll show you a case in a minute here that I build I rebuild cases for these things 
and I have done so for years. This case is fine. I won't mess around with it. The good thing about um, this particular version of it is you can take this part out of the case and put it on a stand uh, over a xylophone so it will mount like that. So if you have to play some really quick changes from uh, xylophone to bells and back, you can do it. In fact, I have a run of Wicked coming up. So, uh, you know, the, the work is coming back. The Broadway shows are coming back after last year. And I'm going to show you that setup, and I'll try to use these bells like that. I just mount them above. So that's a real good bonus for a case like this. All right, and that just slides back in there. Now, this case was really dusty. So, again, I just I use some of this Meguiar's. And um, you can use really anything on the case. It doesn't really matter, just as long as you get that dust off. And it, it's probably not going to affect the sound too much, but if you have any kind of allergies, it'll affect that, certainly. It's, um, it was a huge, thick layer of dust that I pulled out of here. So it probably hadn't been cleaned in many, many years. So we'll just do that. And what I'm going to do now is put the bars back on. And then I will show you another instrument. Uh, just a quick note here. The glockenspiel sounds two octaves higher than written. Uh, that, along with the crotales, it's the same thing. So it's uh, this and the xylophone, which sounds one octave higher than written, are the highest instruments in the orchestra and the percussion family. Other high instruments, obviously, piano, piccolo. So those are the highest ones. Harp goes way up there. Uh, but this high C is the highest C on the piano. So if that gives, gives you any reference. All right, so we'll be back, and I will uh, put another instrument on here once I get these bars uh, on so I can compare the two. So we're back, and I took out my small set of round tops, which are right here. I found these at a flea market probably about 20 years ago, and they were in terrible shape, but luckily all the bars were there. The case they were in was just literally just falling apart you know, destroyed, I should say. It had been wet, and I guess it had been in an attic. This is what the guy told me for years and years. Well, anyway, so I just threw the case out, and I built this new case, and I've done this with several instruments. The bars are not in great shape. They need to be replated, but they still sound really good. So I'll show you how I did this instrument, and this is the kind of case they normally came in. I call them double-decker cases because the bars would come out and you'd stack them. So, and uh, this is an instrument I use all the time. And I had, I kept the original Deegan logo on there on the old case and also the clasp. Uh, but everything else is new. So that's what they look like when you open them up. Okay. I keep that little piece of Auralex in there. And so they stack on, on top of each other. Now, right away, you see that these bars are not in great shape. So I'll hold one of these up, and I'll hold one of these up. <laughs> so you see that? And you see also the 7 eighths and the 1 and a quarter. But you also see the, uh, the same profile there, the round top profile. It's exactly the same. So these are round tops, and it does say it on there, and I'll show you that in a minute. This is a model 1123. That's the name of this particular model of the 7 eighths. Very, very common. They made a lot more of these than they did of the inch and a quarter. And lots of people use these in orchestra pits. They sound wonderful, but not as good as these, as you'll see in the next video. So I kind of built this case and designed it so it would be ultra portable. And we'll show you how we do this. So this folds down. You never take it out of the case. And this part here is just basically just the bottom. It's like a frame. And this is the way they originally made them. So I just kind of copied that. Put this on here gently. And then I made these blocks to support it. And I just put them in a couple holes here like that. And then what you do is you just take this and you just lay it on this these uh, supports and you're good to go. Now, also, oops, backwards, sorry. Also, um, I did use screws and I sunk them instead of the pins. The problem is when you're playing these old instruments, you can hit the pins. 
So I may do that with this newer instrument. I may take out the pins and sink them so you don't have to worry about that. All right, and I did put a little tilt on there so you see they tilt down, which is comfortable. So I've gotten a lot of mileage out of these, and I need to put this back like that. Uh, these are wonderful uh, bells, but they do not sound as good as these. So I'll show you. I'll play some of the same notes. I'm using this little cheap microphone, so I'm not sure I'll be able to handle this. But So that's a B there. That's a B there. Play the C. So you hear a little more sustain on the full size set, the inch and a quarter versus seven eighths. You also hear more purity of tone, but it's very, very close. And for a small instrument like this, the tone is amazing. As opposed to So right away you hear that beautiful tone uh, coming out of both instruments, but it's it's just fuller coming out of the bigger set. So if you can find a set, they're very hard to find, and you can afford them, I would suggest getting the inch and a quarter round tops. But if you, you can find a set of these used and beat up, you can build a case like this, or you could pay someone to build a case like this uh, that works great. And I got these bells for 50 bucks these round tops. Now again, they didn't really have a case, but and the bars are in a great shape. I can get those replated, which would uh, be um, probably, I would think in the $500 range. I'll have to see if Gilberto will do it in, in Chicago, but um, if he's still doing that. So I'll show you if I can get this off here. This round top, I don't know if this is going to come off. There we go. Okay, so you see that Deegan Round Top logo, and it says the model on here, where this one does not. This just says Deegan Round Top. That's all it says. Okay, now interestingly enough, the bars are basically the same length. So what you're losing is just the, the, um, uh, the width of it. So it's, it's roughly a little more than a quarter of an inch, uh, five sixteenths or so larger than this bar. And again, this is model 1123, so you know what to look for. And these are very affordable. I see them quite often on eBay and um, even Reverb sometimes where they're, someone's selling a cheap set of these that looks like you know they were run over by a truck. But really, if you build a case, they, they sound great. So the small round tops, large round tops. So we'll turn off the camera and then I'm going to show you a set of Musser bells, the common set, uh, so you can hear the sound difference between those. So I've taken out the Musser bells. This is a standard uh, model that is very available. You can find them used and most bands and orchestras use them. I'll show you so you can see the bars. And these are not aluminum. Don't buy the aluminum ones. They sound awful. These are steel. That's what you want. I believe it's model 645 or G45 or something. Uh, and you can find these a lot of the times on um, eBay, used. Sometimes they're in bad shape, so you can get a good price for them. They sound the same, even if the bars are a little um, marked up and not pretty. They still pretty much sound the same. And they're not bad sounding bells at all. And uh, we use them in the orchestra outside. We don't want to bring our, our good bells. We have Deegan specials there, which are really good old bells. We don't want to bring them out. So we'll, we'll use these. So I'll, I'll give you a, a comparison. Uh, the first note may distort on this camera mic. So let's just uh, show you. So we'll just go straight up from G to C. And now we'll play the round tops.
Now, right off, you hear the difference, or I do anyway, I'm not sure if it'll come across on the camera, but you hear a difference in body and tone and focus of sound. And of course, the ringing of, of the notes is much longer, so they sustain longer. Uh, one way to try out a set of bells always is just play the top note and see how long that rings. So on these mussers, not too long, uh, but on the round tops, a bit longer. I'd say probably a second longer. That C is actually used a lot, that high C. And like I said, some of them have a, a D. That's in some of the rep, like an extension. So once again, and so I definitely hear a difference. Um, probably you do too. Okay. Um, like I said, the finish on these is a matte finish. So they're not shiny like these. So the good news is they won't blind you necessarily. Again, you got to get used to playing the round tops. Uh, and the pins are sunk, which is great because you won't hit a pin. Here you can do that. So you have a limited playing area where here, no matter where you hit, you're not going to hit that pin. That's also a bonus. So they are easier to play. But the sound, to me, there's no comparison of the sound. Now, these uh, can be had used for, I bought this set for $450, and it's in great shape. Uh, you can find them in not so great shape, even cheaper. Uh, but new, they're probably about $1,200, I would think. I'm not sure I have to look. Uh, but on eBay, you can find them routinely seven eight hundred dollars so compared to the thousands and thousands of dollars you'd pay for a set of round tops this is a bargain so your first set of bells your first glockenspiel should be this instrument i would think i've also used instruments from adams by adams by yamaha uh, in my opinion they're not so great that's just my opinion now sorry uh if you use adams instruments they're okay but but uh the tone to me sounds funny uh the lower you get on a uh, a Glock like here the less focused sound that there is so again that's a good test to um, play those low notes now the low notes are not used as much as the higher register just for your information okay so uh, you know you can try some other uh, bells one thing you can do is go to a PAS convention when they start having them again and uh, try out all the different sets of bells, and that's what I did. Another set of bells, if you can find them, uh, the Leedy, the old Leedy bells are great. I used to have a set of those. I did sell them. I also had a set of Fall Creek bells, which were great. They were just so heavy. It was a K1000 set and an extended range set with a high D. I just got tired of carrying those around, so I did sell them to someone. Um, they're great bells as well, and they're patterned after the old Leedy. So very much like this, but uh, they ring longer, they sound better. So that's an option too. And there are other sets of bells. Demoro, I think, makes them. Several different boutique companies make them. Uh, Arnie Lang, Saito makes them. Um, so you can try different sets. But for me, personally, and a lot of other orchestral percussionists, the Deegan round tops are the best. And then after that, the Leedy's are good, and then other uh, bells like the Deegan Specials are good, uh, and then of course there's smaller round tops, and then we get into the area of the Musser bells, the Adams, and all those other bells. So I hope you enjoyed this. I'll do a video where I play uh, these bells and song bells, which are an octave lower than these. Sometimes song bells are used, uh, you know, in modern times, but mostly they, no companies make those anymore. I think mine are Wurlitzer <laughs> song bells. I just rebuilt a case for them. And I used them recently in the John Williams soundtrack. I think it was Home Alone, the main theme. We played it on song bells. Uh, you can use vibes as an alternative with hard mallets. So it's not something you need to own, but I will show you those uh, at some point. So hope you enjoyed this and we'll see you next time.